I'm Luca Giliberti, contributing writer for Gold Derby, and I'm excited to talk about HBO Max's new series, Minx, with Lennon Parm, who stars as Shelley. So, hi. Lennon. Hi. <laughs> so, <laughs> Len <laughs> so, Lennon, when you were first handed the pilot script and you read it for the first time, at what point yes. did you go, oh, I understand who this woman is, and what was it that caught your eye? Uh, it was immediate, really. Um, I mean, I read the pilot, I think I read the sides first, then followed by the pilot. So just the scenes I was auditioning for. And I, I was like, oh, I know who this woman is. I know how to make her funny. I connect to her immediately. And then um, the script itself, the full tilt thing was one of the funniest things I had read in years. And it's so hard to do that with a pilot because you have so much to communicate in such a short time, set up a world, characters, uh, get everyone caring about them, understanding the stakes, the tone of the show. And it all was just crystal clear, so funny. And um, my husband put me on tape, <laughs> my audition in, in our living room. And um, yeah, I, it was just easy. And I felt, I, it just felt seamless to me. And, uh, and the whole process from there was so um yeah yeah absolutely and I asked that because like you said I think we get a sense of who she is straight away in the first episode in the first scene even which delineates her yeah. so meticulously and you know yeah. the mere fact that she says uh I didn't get everything I wanted in reference to her marriage I think speaks volumes mm -hmm. about her character how much backstory did you then create to really understand the respective dynamics she has with her husband, with her children, with her sister Joyce and so on? Yeah, I mean, you can kind of like read between the lines of what's happening. You get the idea from that scene and, and it's specifically that moment that, you know, she isn't the happiest she's ever been, but like, that's the deal. Like, that's where we are. Um, <laughs> And that was enough for her, or so she thought, until she was introduced to this amazing new, um, you know, titillating world. And she realized that, oh no, like other people are doing it in very different ways, <laughs> uh, very fulfilled on many, on multiple levels. Um, and you don't have to do it the way that you're doing it. Um, and then, you know, as an actor, I, I think I really try to honor what's written. Every episode we learn more and more about her as we were going forward. And um, so I, I'm, I'm going based off of that because, you know, they've got a whole arc. And also Ellen did give me, Ellen, the, the show creator, did give me a heads up about what, 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 to, what to expect and what was coming. So, um, that was really helpful to know, uh, especially in the scenes um, in like episode five and, and six. Mm -hmm. That's uh, very interesting. I was, that was something I had asked myself whether you knew the entire arc for the season or not. And you know that, that also takes us to uh, the sisterhood between Shelley and Joyce. What I really love yeah. about their relationship is, is that they both understand each other in a way or in regard to you know, what the other might want or need. And then they push them uh, to do things based on that. I mean, Shelley propels Joyce to do minx and then Joyce asks uh, Shelley to come aboard. How much, do yeah. you think, how much do you think they do that because they realize that there is something in the other's life that is missing in their own? Well, I think, you know, I don't, I don't have any siblings. I'm an only child, but I think I do this with my friends. Um, and, and I have a lot of girlfriends that are like sisters, um, famously Jessica St. Clair, um, mm -hmm. who I wrote a whole show, multiple shows about <laughs> best friendship and it being like a primary relationship in your life. Um, I think sisters and girlfriends, it's, they know what's right for their friend, or at least <clears throat> they think they do. And, um, you know, you may be saying, giving advice or secretly judging, or, um, you know, you always have an instinct. You've known this person, especially sisters. You've known her. I mean, I've known her in her entire life, right? Shelly's known Joyce her entire life. And so I think she 
she has seen the struggles. She sees the pitfalls, the ways that she normally messes up, um, the faults, but also the strengths. And she's like, I've been watching you go through this hard time. I know this seems outside of the box, but like, we're going to get there. It's a big risk. Yes. But maybe it's worth it because then you'll have the thing that you've always wanted. Right. And, you know, Shelly is titillated by the opportunity for Joyce because she sees that her sister has been spinning her wheels for a while now. Yeah. But how much of that persuasion do you think is also rooted in, in Shelly's own maybe unknown desire to dip her toe into that area a bit? Oh, for sure. She's like, I don't think she, I didn't think, I don't think she realized ahead of time how far she was going to get involved. <laughs> or that she was going to end up working there. I think that it yeah. all kind of or happened very organically and naturally. Otherwise she would have been like, no, 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 no. You know, like them coming into her country club world and, and stirring things up as well. Um, yeah. I, I don't, I mean, definitely her sister is giving her access, but like, yeah, it is an exciting idea. Like, why wouldn't you go for it? You're yeah. single you don't have kids, <laughs> you, uh, you know, you live in an apartment, you like, you have nobody to take care of, but yourself, like, why wouldn't you go for it? Mm -hmm. You know, like, t take these leaps, like before you, whatever is in Shelly's mind, before you settle down or make the next choice, you know, where you're going to then be, you know, uh, mostly like answering to a husband, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most certainly. And, you know, what's fascinating about the two sisters is that they are also bundles of contradictions. I mean, Joyce is, <laughs> quote unquote, the feminist and Shelley is, quote unquote, the housewife. But Shelley is actually more open minded when it comes to stuff like men and uh, self-pleasure. Would yeah. Say, yeah. Would you say that a lot of that comes down to Joyce being more of a textbook feminist at, while Shelley is a wife and a mother in the 1970s? Yeah, it feels like Joyce has been like reading the books, but hasn't had the actual like practice. So she doesn't have the street smarts. Whereas, whereas Shelly has been like on the mean streets of like motherhood and wifehood and um, keeping a house together and everything. And so she is actually the one who is most in need of these feminist uh, and these equitable changes, you know? Um, and I think for for Joyce, that feels scary, like in practice. So um, like we can talk about equity and we can talk about sexual liberation all we want, but like when it actually comes to <laughs> being sexually liberated, that's I think terrifying for her. Whereas for Shelly, I mean, she's been doing it just in secret, you know, because like as a survival mechanism, really. Yeah, and you know, I I just have to say before we move on that one of my favorite scenes is when they talk about self-pleasure and Shelly kind yeah. of teases Joyce, uh, you know, about how relying on men for sexual pleasure is not very feminist. I think uh, that's right, such right. a great scene between the two. <laughs> that was a good one. It was a really fun to film that one. Uh, I can imagine. And I think it's also one of the more sincere, I mean, there are many sincere moments on the show, but it's uh, one of those. And many mm. of the others are between Shelley and Bambi. Um, we're going to get to episode nine in just a second, but I'm curious about the conversations you and Jessica Lowe had as you were fleshing out this relationship and getting comfortable with each other. Yeah. You know, it's not hard to get comfortable with Jessica Lowe. She's, she is so dazzling and really draws you in and you just feel like under her like like her spell her she's shining that bright light on you and if you can make her laugh like forget about it you know um so that wasn't hard that wasn't hard at all and we were we were kind of immediately smitten with each other as performers you know we both came up through a sim the this comedy theater called the Upright Citizens Brigade. So we've kind of been circling each other for a while. And so anytime I was on set with her, I was that was happy for me. Um, and then they started to build this beautiful arc of their friendship and and sh what Shelly is kind of getting out of this woman who who's like unbridled and unapologetic about uh, who she is. And Shelly 
you know, wanting that, like, kind of like um, struggling inside of the, the straight jacket of like this Pasadena housewifeness. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's liberating to be around. And I also think, you know, it's sort of like when you fall in friend love, you know, it's, yes. it's very similar to love, love. Um, when you're falling in love and that initial chemistry, it just feels like electric and you want to be around it all the time. And, uh, it, it's just like, um, it's like, uh, what's the word when, when you can't stop eating it? Like <laughs> you just want more and more of it, you know? Mm-hmm, and, um, mm-hmm. and so that was like a natural progression I thought. And then, so that when the scene happens where, uh, they take it to another level, it feels earned mm-hmm. and grounded and also in the vein of like, I feel so good when I'm with you and you're making me feel desired and beautiful. And I just haven't felt those things in such a long time. Um, and so the leap doesn't, it's surprising, of course, as a storytelling mechanism, it's definitely surprising, hopefully, and, um, but also believable. Oh, most certainly. And I, you know, I think this is also where the show is subverting tropes because you're really putting these two characters together who are basically diametrically opposed, but it doesn't follow the usual trajectory from, you know, they don't get along to their best friends at the end, uh, which I right, really, right. which I really enjoyed. And um, there's been a lot of discussion around how Bambi represents a lot of what Shelley is missing in her own life. But how much would you mm. say they actually, quote unquote, benefit from each other, if that makes sense? Yeah, I mean, like, I haven't really thought how... I. I haven't really thought deeply about how Bambi is benefited by Shelley being in her life, but I guess, I guess it kind of goes both ways that there's, there's like a legitimacy that Shelley is giving Bambi and, and, an importance about, and um, like the opportunity to succeed and be good at something that's kind of a Bambi arc is like, where is my place? What do I do? now that I'm not a centerfold, like, Mm -hmm. um, how can I succeed in this space? And, um, and I think partnering with Shelly kind of gives her some of those tools that she will need to go on to success. Um, and, you know, obviously for Shelly, uh, you know, Bambi opens up a lot of windows, lets a lot of light in, um, shines light on things that are not working. And reignites a passion, I think, that Shelly maybe felt like was, you know, she wasn't ever going to have again. And, you know, that leads us right to the boudoir photos uh, that Bambi takes of Shelly in episode nine. And the kiss that follows instigated by Shelly. What does this moment say about and mean to Shelly? I think it surprises her. I think she went into it like... I don't know what to do. Bambi's like, I have the perfect thing. She likes being around Bambi. But prior to that, she had kind of been taking some time away from the relationship because she, I think after the day they spent together and ended in the police precinct, I think she started to be like, oh, I can't, I might not be able to spend time alone with this woman, you know, but she's sort of at her, the end of her rope and, um, she doesn't know what to do now that Lenny has found out, you know, that basically he hasn't been able to satisfy her (laughs) um, in a very long time. So, and that's embarrassing and it's kind of put an even bigger wedge in their marriage. Mm -hmm. So I think she's just trying to throw it against the wall and see what sticks, you know? Um, So she's out of her comfort zone already um, with the hair and makeup and with the sexy clothes and Bambi is really making her feel at ease and, and allowing her to recognize her own beauty. But it's, it's like it, it's like it needed to come from within, like the exterior, like, yes, all of that is good, but like the, the power needed to come from within. And, and I think she feels that and, is gets kind of out of her way, her own way, and is able to lean into the moment and 
and take what she wants right in that moment. Um, but it's, it, I mean, the way that Natalia directed it and the way that it was written, um, it felt like hopeful and tentative and like, um, can I do this? Do you want this? I don't know if you want it. If you want it, I want it. Like, like, like nervous, like teen, teenager energy or something, you know? Um, and then all, obviously there's the whole, like, oh yeah, you're married to a man thing, but <laughs> um, that makes it, that makes it off limits and dangerous. And you know, that, that takes us to, you know, because Shelly does go back to her husband uh, after that, after the kiss, and then actually shows him the photos, uh, which yeah. I found very surprising. But, you mm. know, that in turn is then followed by her giving her husband a kiss and then, you know, looking very content, which then makes you question what exactly is going through her head. So yeah. what is this act of showing him the photos? Tell us about her season one arc and how it ends. Well, I don't know if you noticed, but she's still also wearing the bracelet that yeah. Bambi yeah. Mm-hmm. gave her, mm-hmm. right? So I I feel like <clears throat> in the, the scene right prior to that, where she is uh, talking to her son about his baseball game, And then she looks around and she sees the mess that they've been living in and the chaos. And I think she kind of snaps herself out of whatever reverie she's in um, and says, like, this isn't tenable. I'm not this person and I can't stay here forever. And I have a life and I need to go back to it as good as this feels. And so I think she she makes the conscious choice to like try to take some of the passion that she's found with Bambi and that um, and that energy inside of her home to her husband to reinvigorate that um, as if the pa- passion is transferable. Um, mm-hmm. But it feels like we're setting up for a real struggle inside of Shelly. Um, and some really good juicy scenes with Rich Summer, who plays my husband and, and Bambi. Um, because it, it, in, the, in 1972, you couldn't have all of that. You just couldn't have, you know, for a wife to <laughs> follow any passions outside of her husband, I think it would have, it would mean you don't get your family anymore. And, and obviously that's, that's gonna be a deal breaker. So. Um, it seems like there's lots of good juicy stuff coming for her. Um, but I, but I also kind of commend Shelly for trying to bring it, to bring it home and to, to light the fires at home, um, whether or not that works will remain to be seen. (laughs) Absolutely. And, you know, I really do think, you know, as a viewer, I do think that is a very realistic conclusion to that arc and, you know, follow up to that situation based on what you already said. Um, right. But on a final note, I should say congratulations uh, for being renewed. Oh, for the, I'm being renewed you. for a second season. Yeah, we're very excited. We're and, you know, very excited. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. And, you know, tying into what uh, you had just started talking about, what facets of Shelley are you most excited to explore in season two, maybe in addition to the ones you already uh, mentioned? Yeah, I think there's going to be a real struggle. I think she's going to try to forge forward with her, um, with her Pasadena housewife life, and that that's just going to feel difficult, given that she's now had this window into another world. Um, I don't know what they're cooking up. They're writing right now. So, uh, but I mean, they gave me such amazing stuff to play in season one. So I can only imagine season two is going to get even better. Um, I I don't know. Like, is there like a, is there like a Shelly goes to a, like a gay nightclub scene or <laughs> I just, I, I'm really into, I think I'm going to have some, a really great juicy scene with um with Rich where he finds out about it somehow Mm -hmm. or um yeah maybe there are more erotic fantasies in in the uh second season like (laughs) in episode (laughs) nine who knows who Who knows knows? yeah that was a crazy thing to shoot it was really fun though all those guys were such good sports 
Yeah, and you know, well, I'm, I'm very excited. I can't wait to see where this story goes and to see which direction Shelley takes. Uh, Lena, it was such a pleasure to speak to you today. Thank you, you so much too, for your Luca. time. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for joining me in my car. <laughs>